Hi. That was great. Did you guys catch, did you guys catch that, those of you who are sitting and waiting? Um, follow along. Hi. Hi. Oh, it's much better. <laughs> um, I was kind of worried you guys couldn't see the title because um, the last thing I need with this is a confrontational audience. <laughs> um, when, you, uh, when you talk about introversion or introverted people, these are the kinds of folks you know that are that work at home, don't really hang out a lot, the guy that's hanging out in the corner counting down the minutes until he gets to leave the party because he knew if he didn't show up that he'd never get invited again, but he also doesn't know anybody there, and he gets a little shaky, and he kind of sits there and waits and shakes his ice for a while, and then he goes home. But he's there, and he makes it. Well, I'm not going to talk about that guy, because the guy at the party, he's got his own thing going on. I'm going to talk about introverted people dealing in the extroverted world of the workplace, particularly in academics. And because I'm talking about introverted or introversion in the workplace, I'm supposed to talk about Susan Cain's wonderful book, Quiet, and all of the great thing. No. No. No, I don't do that le leadership camp, uh, jingoistic, we're going to show you how to be the best you can be. What we've got is a couple, a couple summers ago, I was privileged to work as a mentor for Delta College's Student Leadership Academy. And we do a, or a retreat to try to get the students to meet each other, meet the mentors, and get a little mesh going on before we start having our meetings and getting them ready to start being the people that are going to lead not only Delta, but their communities. And a couple of years ago, we had a great group of students, and we went to a place called the Kaleidoscope Center. It's essentially a learning through horses. Now, if you're not familiar with horses, I'm not talking like TV familiar. I'm talking like right next to one. They are really, really big. <laughs> I mean, very intimidatingly big. And oh, what, what's here right now is a picture of one of the students, or it was, named Nicole. Now, over the course of the day, we were sent out into the pen to talk to, or to meet the horses, have a little interaction. Nicole really wasn't into that. And as we got on, there were probably six or eight different experiences. Don't you love that? You go to a conference or you go to a retreat. It's a retreat. It's not a meeting. It's team building. It's not, we have to go do this. And it's an experience. It's not, why the heck am I following this horse around? But Nicole was really incredibly nervous about the horses. She'd never been around horses before. They really, really, she was shutting it down. And as the day went on, she was getting less and less ability to be, take part in the activities. And of course, being a leadership camp, you've got the strong, forward, extroverted people that are gonna be pushing our friends to go, coming up with rapid ideas, and using all the latest jingoistic things they can say. Like, come on, Nicole, you gotta get out of your shell. You're never gonna get anywhere until you come out of your shell. You're gonna be able to do this. Just come out of your comfort zone. It's called your comfort zone. It's there for a reason. Um, for, 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 for people who don't work well outside of their comfort zone, who don't wanna be told to do, your comfort zone is where you do your best work. And I took her aside and I said, listen, you don't have to do that. Stay in your comfort zone. Work from your comfort zone. Let that give you the ability to go on and do these other things. And we had another couple of experiences, and Nicole hung around and watched and you know, got involved. But eventually the day just kind of went on. And it really had me thinking about the interactions that I have with people at my job, with people I've seen around, and oh yeah, um, I know you're supposed to put your Typical PowerPoint presentation, you gotta have what you're gonna say and your quotes and your things and your pictures. No, this is to distract you so that you don't look at me. <laughs> so with this experience, I started spending a little bit of time thinking about what it's like to work in an environment where 
the extroverted people, the loud people, the people that are really out there just being boisterous and making themselves known are the ones that get promoted. The loud people are the ones that are out there telling you, look at me, I did this, I did well. And <laughs> I will say, well, I was never a shy kid, and mom will back me up on that. <laughs> but as I got older, I really figured out that I don't really like you people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I work much better if I'm given the time to just let me do it. And this is a really common trait with introverted people. They have the ability to be just as strong, just as creative, just as big a part of your team as anyone else, except they don't do it the same way you do. So they need the time to think about it, have time to themselves. Um, for instance, oh, let me look at, look at the notes here. <laughs> the extroverted world is a place that we have to live. We're not given the choice. If we want to succeed, we have to be out there as boisterous extroverted people. Um, have you ever gone to a wedding, like with your spouse or your significant other, and they were the only one you knew at that wedding, but they had to go, so you had to go? You know how weird and awkward the day was? Especially if she told you or he told you you can't get drunk. You gotta make, not make me a fool. And as the day goes on, you're running into all these people that you don't know and you're weirded out by them and they've got these stories and you don't know what's going on. You can't get a word in edgewise and every time you try to say something, somebody jumps on top of you and at the end of the night, all you are is exhausted. That is every day if you spend your life trying to be something other than what you really are. And if what you feel is to succeed in your world, you have to act like this happy-go-lucky, going around, jumping on people. I mean, if you ask anybody who knows me, I'm a huggy guy. That did not come easy. I mean, when I was younger, it did. I, I've had, my, my perspective has changed. But ask somebody who sees me on the street or knows me a little bit, I'm loud, large, bright. I have a skin condition. <laughs> and I'm an out there guy. I get out there, I throw out, I deal with people, I talk to people. Because I needed to do that to get ahead in my job and to get along in the world. I'd learned again how to be that guy I was as a kid that I'm not anymore. And it's hard. Now think about it, if every day when you went to work and you're there to do the best job you can do, to put as much of your energy into your work as you possibly can, but every day the number one thing that you're doing is being you. I'm the me they expect me to be. That's the first priority you have at all times. Is your team gonna get the best out of your work? Are you gonna give the best performance you can at your job? Are you gonna have the best ideas and come up with the most creative solutions you can come up with? If what you're really trying to do is be you. Now, when you've got the introverted person, they often have difficulty with meetings. Meetings are a great place where you can all come together and agree that the loudest person in the room is right. <laughs> meetings are a wonderful place where you can sit around for two hours discussing what the next meeting's going to be about and not actually accomplishing anything. And again, you get into this leadership jingo. We gotta brainstorm this one. Let's all just sit here and toss out some ideas. No. Brain's in here. <laughs> I'll brainstorm in here. Just shut up for a minute. <laughs> and when people are tossing out ideas, I can only give my own example. There's times when you're leading a meeting that you have to be that forward person. You have to be out there, right, Dora? You have to put yourself out front and say, we're doing this, we're doing that. But the rest of the time, you hear an idea, you start thinking about the problem, and you sit back and you hear the brainstorming. Let's do it this way, let's do it that way. Oh, that's great, man, you're wonderful. Boy, this is a good idea. And at one point you go, shut up and you flip a switch, and you shut them off. And you don't listen to the meeting anymore because all they're doing is patting each other on the back and talking about how great it's going to be, and nobody's actually discussing the problem anymore. 
And all of a sudden, you pipe up and go, hey, wait, I was just kind of thinking about it. And actually, if we do this and this and this instead of that, it'll put it in order. Here's why it'll work. Here's the data that backs it up. Here's what it'll, whoa, 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 whoa. we're going to go ahead and keep going with our idea. Um, um, but I had an idea. I tried your brainstorming. I tried to chip in my idea. And you guys just kept talking about what you were going with. Here's what's wrong with what you're going with. Change the rules of the meeting. If you're going to have a meeting to solve a problem, don't put out an agenda that says we're going to talk about a problem. Send out a notification early on that says, hey, you're going to be at this meeting next week. Here's the thing we're looking at. Bring your ideas. We're not going to brainstorm about it at the meeting. Bring your ideas. Work on this on your own. That's going to bring out the power and the strength of your introverted work partner. They're going to have time to feel confident with what they've brought to the table. They're going to have time to come up with their very best idea. They're going to have an excuse to not go to that party. And they're going to bring data. And it's going to work. It's not necessarily going to be the right idea every time. But you're going to get something out of this person that you otherwise would have squashed by the simple dynamics of the meeting. A meeting is a very difficult place if you're trying to think. A meeting is a very difficult place if you're trying to express an idea different than what the group has decided is right. Especially if you get interrupted by the existing idea. So give a little time. Understand that the person who isn't standing out and isn't getting noticed, perhaps they aren't the shy one, they aren't the quiet one, Maybe they're just thinking. Give them a minute. And then let them have a chance to talk. Let them have a chance to think and figure out the problem and work it out before they come forward. And then, hey, yo, you haven't said anything for a while. You working on that? Yeah, yeah. You got any ideas? Yeah. Let's hear them out. And just give it some time. Why keep bashing your head up against the problem when you can just give it a little minute to think. Now, in giving the time to think, you're allowing everyone to have their best opportunity. Brainstorm quietly for a minute. Hey, why don't we just ponder the question for a couple minutes and see where everybody's at. Now, when it came down to the Leadership Academy, and it came down to Horse Day. And remember, horses are big, very big. Horses were really frightening to Nicole. And I'll tell you what, I was a little nervous too, and I've been around horses, but they had this really, really big one, and it didn't want to do anything, and so he was on my team. But after lunch, while the rest of us were having lunch, Nicole actually went out to the lady that ran the, the service, ran the center, and said, hey, can you give me time to do this on my own? And she said, yeah. And so while everybody else was sharing their voice, oh, I did this and I did that and I've got these great plans, she was in a spot where she could take her comfort zone with her. And by the end of the day, she was brushing the horses in the pen or brushing the horses in the barn and leading them around. I think she might have actually been a little less jittery than me by the end of the day. And it was just amazing to me to watch that happen. And it's been something I've, I'd never really given it a thought before. And seeing it happen in her and seeing her become a leader from that and understand that she could use that position in her life to burst forth, to be a leader and to bring what she has, bring what she offers, even in a world that doesn't want to give her a chance sometimes to just be comfortable. Thank you very much for your time.